This final section will cover reporting. It's important to report on your data to make it easy for others to extract and understand the information that's most relevant. This section will have three chapters. First chapter is spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are a common way to communicate information to stakeholders. The next chapter is R Markdown, which allows you to create documents in a programmatic fashion that improves reproducibility. And then the last chapter is R Shiny, which is a tool used to develop web applications and is commonly used in the creation of dashboards, hosting static reports, and custom tooling. As previously mentioned, spreadsheets are a common way to communicate information to state stakeholders. The spreadsheets chapter will go over how to export both XLSX files and CSV files from R, how to format those spreadsheets, and how to add formulas to them. In order to export a data frame to a CSV file, you can use the write CSV function. This function will accept a data frame followed by the desired output location of your file. Let's start by creating a sample data frame to work with. So we have a vector named people, and this is a character vector that contains one missing value, and then a numeric vector named ID, and we're gonna use those as our columns in our data frame. All right, let's take a look at this data frame. Let's print DF, see what that looks like. Now let's, spe let's specify the location we wanna store this CSV file and execute the write.csv function. So we're gonna do that with this piece of code. So here we use the file.path function to specify a path to the example.csv file and a temporary directory that will automatically be erased when your R session ends. So let's go ahead and try that out. Okay. All right, this code will give you a file that looks like the image that you see on the screen. You'll notice that the first column contains the row numbers of the data frame. We can remedy that by setting row.names to false, like this next example. Okay, so here we're doing the same thing as before, except we are setting row.names equal to false. Let's run that, see what we get. So this code should yield a result that looks like the example you see on the screen. So now we just have the ID column and the person column, and we don't have the row numbers anymore. But you'll notice that one of the names is an NA value. You can tell R how to handle these values at the time of exporting your file with the NA argument. This argument will replace any NA values with the value of your choice. Let's try replacing the NA value with unspecified. Okay, so we can use that parameter by doing something like this. We're doing the exact same line of code as before, except now we have the NA parameter. And we're saying any NA value replaced with the text string unspecified. Let's run that. And now our exported spreadsheet looks something like the example that you see on screen. Instead of an NA value, we have unspecified directly in the cell. Excel files are handled very similarly to CSV files, except that you'll need to use the write underscore Excel function from the write Excel package. So let's show what that looks like. Get rid of all of this. So we load the write Excel library to our environment. We specify the output location. Note that we have dot XLSX in our file path. And then we use the write underscore XLSX function give it our data frame, and then specify the output location. When saving Excel workbooks, you can also leverage the open XLSX library to format and add formulas to your workbook. Let's use the Iris data set to demonstrate these capabilities. So first, let's get rid of this. We'll load the open XLSX library, clear our envir environment. And then let's break down the iris data set into three separate data sets based on species. So we have a Satosa data set and so on. And then each of these, we're just filtering the iris data set for species equal to the respective species name. So let's run all of this. Next, we'll use the create workbook function from the open XLSX library to create a blank workbook object. Run that. 
Now we'll add three worksheets to our workbook. These worksheets will ultimately be tabs in our Excel workbook. So we've got WB, which is a blank workbook object. And since that exists, we're going to add a worksheet named Satosa to that blank workbook, and then so on for the other two data sets. We'll run those. So now we have a blank workbook with three tabs, one tab for each species. We can also create styles to apply to our workbook. Let's create a style for our headers as well as a style for the body of our data. So that looks like this. So our first style we'll call heading and we'll use the create style function and kind of define some of the, some of the parameters we want to use. So we'll use font name for Sego UI. We'll have font size of 12, give it a font color, a background color, and then text decoration. We'll say we want to bold the text for the headers. And then for the body, we'll use the create style function again, except we'll just give it a font and a font size. So let's run those. Okay, now let's apply our three data sets to the workbook object. So right now we just have a blank workbook object that has three worksheets and it's got some styles associated, or we've got some styles out there, but they aren't actually added to the workbook yet, but there's not actually any data there. So we can add that data by using the write data function. So we'll do it once for each data set that we have. So we do write data. We say we wanna write it to WB, which is our workbook object. And then we have some parameters here. So like start column, start, start row, um, row names we set to false. We'll run that we'll run these bottom ones too. Okay. Now we have our data, we have our worksheets, but we have our styles that we haven't actually added to the workbook yet. So let's go ahead and add those styles. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see all of it. So for each worksheet, we're going to add two styles, one for the heading and then one for the, the, um, the body that we created. So we've got heading and body. We're telling, we're telling it what rows or cells or columns to add it to. And we're just going to do that for twice, one for each style for each tab. So we've got a total of six fun functions that we're executing here. Okay. Finally, now that we have all the data, all the styles added, we've got our worksheets added. Let's go ahead and save the workbook to an XLSX file. And that will look something like this. So you should see something that looks a little bit like this image. You can see we've got our heading styles applied along with our body styles. We've got three tabs, which you can see down at the bottom and each tab should have the data set that was specified on their respective tabs. All right, you might've noticed that this script is getting a little long and we're repeating ourselves a little bit. So it actually doesn't need to be this long. We can get rid of all of this and use loops so that way we're not repeating the same logic over and over again so we pull in the library we separate our data sets we create our blank workbook and then create our two styles um, and then we create a list of our data sets so this is a list containing all three data sets and then uh, our, a list of our worksheet names and then we say for i and one through three, create a new data frame that's equal to data sets index i. So it's going to go data sets here, and then on the next loop, data set here, and so on. Also, once we create that data set, we want to add a worksheet to our workbook object, and it's going to loop through this next worksheets vector and give it their respective names. 
And then after we create the data frame and we add the worksheet, it's going to write the data to the workbook for the given worksheet. It's going to add the heading style and then it's going to add the body style. And then finally, it's going to save it. So that's a little more succinct way to do what we had done in the previous step, but it's going to do the exact same thing. If we wanted to add another column to each of our worksheets that used an Excel formula to determine the ratio between the sepal length and the sepal width, we could use the write formula function to accomplish that. So let's go through an example that uses a loop that creates a formula for each row, which divides the respective value in column A by the respective value in column B. Next, we add the heading style to the first row in column six and a header named sepal.ratio. And then finally, we'll write the formula vector to a column six beginning on row two. So let's, let's get rid of all of this and take a look at this example. So it begins pretty much the same way as our last example. We bring the library in, create our data sets, create our workbook object, create our two styles, and then create our list of data sets, and then our vector of worksheet names. We create our loop again for i in one through three. Each time we go through the loop, we're creating a data frame that's equal to the data in the data sets list. We're going to add a worksheet with the corresponding worksheet name. We're going to write the data. We're going to add our two styles. But then this is where things start to change. We create an empty list called formula. And then we say for X and two, we're starting at row two to skip the headers through the number of rows in our data frame plus one. So that way we get to the end of the spreadsheet. Uh, the spreadsheet's going to be one row longer than our actual data frame is because of the headers. So for the amount of rows in our data set, we're going to append to this empty list. Uh, we're going to append it to itself is what we're saying here. And then we're going to paste a comma X, which is going to be a number. So, the first time it's going to be two divided by B comma X, which is going to be a two for the first iteration. So functionally in Excel, we have a two divided by B two, which is how the Excel functions work or formulas. All right. After we create those formulas, we're going to add style to a new column header that we're going to be creating. And then we're going to write some data to that column header, sepal.ratio. So that's going to be uh, the sixth column, the first row. And then underneath that column, so sixth column, but starting at row two, we are going to write that formula uh, vector that we just created. And then we're going to go ahead and save the workbook. And that should get you something that looks like the image you see on screen. So exactly the same as the previous example, except now we have a new column in column F and it's equal to, for the first observation anyways, it's equal to A2 divided by B2. But if you were to go down, you'd see it's A3 divided by B3 and so on.